So in a period of about seven seconds, JR, Kawhi uh, Leonard reminded us, even though we shouldn't ever need reminding, which I think will be your point at some point in this clip, he reminded us why he is firmly within the MVP race and he is an MVP candidate and mm -hmm. a phenomenal player. So they played uh, the Houston Rockets last night. Um, and of course, we wish we could show you the footage, but we don't want to get, get thrown out of this realm of YouTube once we show the footage. So I can just basically give you a play-by-play. -play. Uh, Kawhi Leonard hit a contested three that was... Uh, mind-numbingly remarkable on its own, and then doing Kawhi Leonard things, is he doesn't sit there brag, he's not doing any of this, he's not doing mixing <laughs> it or he's not doing whatever. He quickly gets his head focused on the game again, goes down the other end of the court and blocks James Harden as to what would have been a game-tying layup. And that is why this guy is on a different level from so many players in the NBA, it's, and it's remarkable. It's, it's one of those things I feel like, um, I mean, we talked about to cross over sports, uh, Ruben and I were talking yesterday about the 40 time. Yeah. And the Washington player who ran a record 40 time, and it's all people want to think about. Uh, it's about more than that when it comes to team sports, man. I get it, it's a good thing. Yes, it's great to score points in the NBA. You need to, which is why he did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then after that, you have to also stop the other team. So there's a two sided role to, to, a, to a, a player, and they're all around greatness and what makes their team better. They would have lost that game. With, with, if not for Kawhi Leonard, yeah. who blocked James Harden's shot when he wasn't actually defending him. Yeah. So it's even that, it's it's understanding every element of the game to where you do things, where it takes all you, he dribbled around, made that three, and then also returned back to the side of the, of the floor. Notice that James Harden, everyone knows who's going to have the ball. Yeah. Wasn't guarding him, but said, I'm going to need to help my defender because he's probably tired, he probably can't hang with him, he has probably put up this many points already today. I need to stop this, and he stopped it, man. It's it's understanding, it's composure, and it's performing. And you're right there as well. It's James Harden is a remarkable player going mm -hmm. to the rim. It takes a very talented player to to even understand uh, and stand a chance to be able to compete against him. And that's where the likes of Kawhi Leonard is in the same category when it comes to the NBA to the players in my mind, like LeBron James, who would do a very similar thing as we know yeah. from his infamous block on uh, Iguodala in the finals last year. But that's what Kawhi Leonard has been doing this. This is a problem. Yes. It's not that it's new. And that's what I wanted to get the question to you as Jason Rubin, by the way, who's out sick. He's got, he's got like allergies or something like that. The kid's got soft. <laughs> he's got soft idea. But he's sending out the clip idea and it's the one that I had in my mind is he is an MVP candidate, but why does it always not surprise us, but why does he always fly under the radar to the MVP candidate? Why is he not always considered one of the front runners? What's the thing you think about Kawhi Leonard? How quiet he is? I mean, if he, anybody thinks about him, because that's the thing, he's quiet, he's to himself, he doesn't boast, as you said, there was no three-point celebration. What is it, Um, actually, James the, one one. That I, the one that I enjoy is actually Carmelo's, because he does the, like, you know. On head, yeah. I like that one. Um, but outside of that, I mean, everyone has their thing, but look, James Harden has his beard. James Harden has his mix. Um, uh, I mean, look at the other MVP, M MVP, MVP candidates. You also got Russell Westbrook. What do you know about Russell Westbrook? He's fire. He's crazy. Yeah. He does those Mountain Dew uh, charge commercials, whatever they are, with the <laughs> energy drink commercials. Yeah. He's wild. He's out there. He wears flashy, loud things. He does yeah. this thing. He wore the big uh, eyeglasses. He's fighting uh, with Kevin Durant right yeah. now. There's so many things that brings your attention to these guys. You go, oh, well, and he's also averaging a triple-double, which is amazing. We're talking about... Westbrook. Uh, Westbrook. So, yes, he's performing, but there's always an extra added thing onto it that people go, oh, well, the fan base has to eat something up outside of just the numbers of the game because the casual fans are what make MVPs or what make all-stars, obviously, because they vote for it that yeah. way. It's the reason why, um, I mean, even when injured, um, uh, Yao Ming was voted to the all-star team every damn year. I was yeah. like, dude, his feet are broken. <laughs> he's not playing in all-star games that he's getting voted to because fans just go, oh yeah, Yao Ming, yeah, Yao Ming, yeah, Yao Ming, yeah, yeah. yeah. Seven for six, yeah, yeah, Yao Ming. So anyway, uh, Westbrook, Harden, Steph Curry, three-pointers like a video game, LeBron James, self-explanatory. So all these guys are great players. Isaiah Thomas is the other one that actually would fly under the radar because he's just jumped very, on the scene. Very true. But there's always something outside of it that has to happen. Kawhi Leonard sits, he's kind of like a, a Tim Duncan. Very he much fits so. this team. Yeah. And they win, they're always there, they're consistent, but they're not flashy, so people don't want to watch. They go, I don't watch the boring Spurs. Oh, and Kawhi Leonard, who's that guy? Drafted in the second, third round, who cares? Yeah. From San Diego State, who cares? That guy would rather get on the other end of the court and help his team out rather than sit there <laughs> and bask in the brilliance of the shot that he just made. Uh, and it really, you, you hit the nail on the head. There is just something about sports, and it, and it translates over 
many different sports. You look at some of the, there's a reason why quarterbacks take all the accolades, as we know, mm. uh, in American football, because not just to the fact that they're so important, but a lot of them, when you see like Cam Newton, who makes a lot of noise because um, these are things that almost go part and parcel with being a star player. You're mm -hmm. expected to bring this finesse. You're expected to bring this uh, kind of star character to it. And if you happen to just be someone that knuckles down and gets the job done, uh, more often than not, unfortunately, you'll get lost in the pack when there's someone out there who's been a little louder to you when you shouldn't. Of course, everything should be regarded to merit. And I know I'm going to make a comparison, which I think you will then piggyback on because I know what you wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. But the same goes for other sports like the UFC. Um, not just as Conor McGregor is such a phenomenal fighter, but he has this <clears throat> aura about him that puts him immediately to the top of the list. And as much as I'm a big fan of his, I don't think that it's fair that someone like Demetrius Johnson, who's a fighter that just goes yeah. in, gets his job done, he's a gamer, he likes to just get the thing, he likes to kind of keep himself to himself. One of the most dangerous pound for pound fighters in the world, if you were to ask, who do you think, who represents the UFC? He's way down the list because he just kind of goes about his own business. And that's very much like Kawhi Leonard. So uh, Conor McGregor, Ronda Rousey, who now has lost two devastating fights and yeah. career is generally over. I mean, everyone's consensus says that. UFC career, movie career, UFC, yeah, yeah. to be determined. Exactly. <laughs> Suddenly she's, she's SI swimsuit model, yeah, you know, when no one would think of it that way. So there was a video that, that started circulating uh, last month in, in February of uh, a British fighter. He was fighting in BC MMA 18, Joe Harding. And it was an 18 to 20 second clip that was circulated Everywhere. I ran into it. And I don't watch MMA. I watch the fights when Conor McGregor's in, yeah. or when Ronda Rousey's in, and I meet up and you do a UFC fight night thing on pay per view. Yeah. So we do those, and I do only some of those. So Joe Harding uh, was showboating extensively, and it didn't end well for him. Let's check it out. Ooh, Joe with a high, high kick, kick that lands and then a jab to follow it up. Again with the jab. Oh! And then Oh, it ended badly, as everyone would know what happened when you showboat in, in the fighting style sports. Uh, sometimes it ends really badly for you. But when I saw it, I was on the same vein of what all this ridicule that was happening to this guy online was, was he was receiving, until I read an article from Ben Linehan. And I want to give him credit because he completely changed my mind about it. Because we hate the showboat. We hate the guy who stands out and does all this. You're winning, dude. He was, by the way, he was convincingly winning that match. Yeah until that happened. So what, uh, what Ben Linehan pointed out was in this kind of era of sports where people only watch pay-per-view fights, and again, he mentioned Conor McGregor, when that guy stands out because of what he does and gets all this attention, how are you gonna get a name for yourself? You fight for a living, the, 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 every day someone's punching you in the face mm -hmm. is practice, and you're supposed to go out there and somehow make money, make ends meet, make rent, you want to wear expensive suits like Conor does, right? Yeah. So you need to make a name for yourself. And the nature of the game is nobody's going to pay attention to you. The fans aren't until you do something like this. Even if he had gone on to win that match, didn't that, that kick didn't land. And he went on to win the match. People go, oh, I hate that guy, Joe Hardy. I'm going to watch him next time. He <laughs> gets his ass kicked. But that's what generates some money for him, right? The next time it's like, this guy's a very talented fighter. Then after he fights... And he wins, and you hate him, you're gonna watch him again. Yeah. And you're gonna watch him again. You can't wait to lose. Look what happened to Rousey. She had this persona. She was hated. She was angry. People loved her and they hated her. If you have love and hate, people are gonna watch you on both sides. And next to next you know, you're an SI swimsuit model, and people are gonna hate going, oh, I hate her. She looks good. Yeah. Oh, I love her. She looks good. It doesn't matter. They're gonna pay attention to you. And he was just trying to get that. I can't blame Joe Harding for trying to go that route. And it's a similar thing. And the reason we connect this, is if Kawhi Leonard was out there doing different celebrations, doing Mountain Dew commercials, we'd be like, you know what? Kawhi Leonard's the top of the MVP list. You see what he did last night against Houston? <laughs> so true. He followed it up when he just endorsed Mountain Dew with that, uh, after having a <laughs> can afterwards. But it's so true. I mean, there is definitely the same amount of LeBron James haters as there is LeBron James lovers. And both of them equally will pay their cable bill and will watch him <laughs> and will buy the, will go to the games and they will make sure that everyone in the world is reminded of how much they hate him or how much they love yeah. him. And that is an unfortunate reality. And it's always, it, you could make the connection to many different sports. Uh, a bunch of athletes kind of fly under the radar. There's a reason why uh, Cristiano Ronaldo is always considered right there with Lionel Messi. I don't think he's there in terms of quality. I still think that Messi is always, for me, the superior footballer. But Cristiano Ronaldo has a lot more to him than Lionel Messi does. He mm -hmm. has the physique. He has the exactly. confidence. He has all this to him. And that kind of, in a way, 
not as much on the field as much as he is a phenomenal player. It kind of raises his status and puts him right there with him. And that's why a lot of people, if you were to look back at Lionel Messi just on his own and his career, I don't actually think he would be as well known as much as he is a phenomenal player. I'll take these words literally. He's going to be known even more so now because he was right there with Ronaldo and there was that rivalry and there was that hate-love kind of thing that was There's going on between both of them. To. Something to connect them. So I, I always will feel bad and feel unjust and will try to scream from the rooftops for the players like Kawhi Leonard to get the job done. Yeah. He's almost like a, he's a working class NBA superstar, right? He just gets things done, but he has the ability, if you watch him close enough, because most of these people, you're right at the start, Jay, they won't even watch the Spurs. They'll just see these mm -hmm. clips and they'll be like, ah, maybe I should watch Jay, uh, Kawhi Leonard. And then they'll watch a game and they'll be like, ah, oh, it's, it's mechanic. They, they just kind of do all these mechanical things. They, they're, in, they're like a machine. Mm -hmm. It's not as fun to watch as it is Steph Curry trying to shoot from 40 yards out or whatever, 40 feet. He'll take a shot and run away in the other direction. Like, exactly. oh, that's cool, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So uh, these, unfortunately, they fly under the radar. But I'll tell you what, do you know who loves to fly under the radar? Is probably Kawhi Leonard. And do you know who loves to fly under the radar? It's Greg Popovich. That's the system that he's Absolutely. built. It's not a coincidence that he continues to have these players. When's the last kind of controversy that came out of the Spurs. It was Tony Parker cheating on Eva. Oh, yeah. That was probably the biggest controversy that came out of the Spurs. They don't like to have any sort of drama that associates himself with it. And if it, if it does associate himself to it, Greg Popovich is the first one to kind of stamp it out. And that's why he's got such a uh, huge deal of respect for Kawhi Leonard. And some people don't like it that they win that way. Yeah, they don't. see the exciting thing. Like, all oh, these born guys keep winning. They keep winning. Exactly. So, uh, Basically, what do you think in the comments? Kawhi Leonard, Jason wants it to read that Kawhi Leonard should win MVP, but he won't. And is it because of all that stuff that we talked about here that doesn't go along with him? Is he just this kind of boring, but no, just remarkable athlete that's going to fly under the radar? Uh, let us know in the comments. Follow JR on Twitter at JR Jackson. At all of them. At all of them. I got all the name stuff. everywhere. Oh, man, you've got it all the same. I got my we name always talk about this. Yes. I'm, I've got Evans in there and underscores, man. <laughs> they can't find you. Yeah, no one can find you. Unfortunately. Just give up. See you soon.